I'm gonna show you how to use multiple nested frames in your native script UI so you can separate out the different parts of the UI. You'll be able to navigate one part while keeping the other part on screen at all times. So multiple frames plus a giveaway coming up in this video. Hey everybody, this is Alex from nativescripting.com. Have you taken one of our advanced native script courses yet to take your native script skills to the next level? Make sure to check that out in the description down below and you can find a discount code there too. And if you're new here and you want to see more native script tips, tricks and tutorials, click on the subscribe button and the little bell so you don't miss anything. It was not too long ago that native script only had one frame, the topmost frame, or you can also call it the root frame, and that's all you got. So you can navigate the entire screen. Now you can navigate parts of the screen by using multiple nested frames. This allows you to do all kinds of really cool things, like create reusable frames with pages, navigate one part of the screen while keeping the other one on the screen at all times, like uh, some kind of ad bar or bottom sheet. That's what I'll be showing you in this video. And you have a clean method for creating an animated bottom sheet that slides up and down. You've asked me a few times on this channel to create a bottom sheet tutorial, one that animates animates up and down, and that's coming next week. But for now, to get ready for that, you need to know how to use multiple frames. So that's what we're going to do. And make sure you subscribe so that you know when that bottom sheet tutorial comes out. And also let me know down in the comments below if you've used multiple frames in your native script applications. Also, stay to the end of the video for a chance to win a prize. All right, you ready? Let's do this. I've created a brand new project here using native script and TypeScript, and this is our Hello World template. I'm running this on iOS and Android simulators side by side. All right, let's begin. In the app folder, the page we're seeing right now is this main page XML. So this is the page that I'd like to host my entire UI. So right now I'm going to clean this up and just get rid of everything in here. And let's get rid of the navigating to and the class on the page. Now, since I want two separately navigable frames here, I can't just put two items, two elements on the page without having a layout first. So for example, I can't have one frame like this and then followed by another frame. In native script, you need to wrap things in a layout. You can't just have two elements in the page like this. Okay, so I'm going to wrap this in a grid layout. And usually when you're using a grid layout, you would specify rows and columns. But because we're using frames, that's not going to matter to us. And the reason for that is on iOS, frames always take up the entire screen. So the layout system of the grid is not going to override that by positioning your frames properly on the page. We're going to take care of that in a different way. All right. So there's our two frames inside a grid layout. We're going to navigate using this frame. And this frame is always going to be on the screen showing us a button. If we take a look at app root, this is our root frame and you can see that it specifies a default page so a frame has to specify a default page let's copy this property right here and go back so this frame must specify a default page and this frame also must specify a default page for this one i'm gonna say home page and for this one i'm gonna say action page i don't know why i picked these names <laughs> just that this one on the bottom is always gonna have our button it's always gonna be showing so that's gonna be the action all right but you can name these whatever you want of course so because we've just pointed our frames to these pages, we must create these pages now. So I'm going to go here and create a new file called homepage.xml. And I need to create another file called actionpage.xml. And each one of these is also going to be a page. So I'm going to copy this page from here, paste it in here, close the page tag, and let's do the same thing for our home page. Our home page layout is going to be pretty simple. I'm just going to have a stack layout in here. And inside the stack layout, I'm going to need to give our page a label so that we know what it is. Let's give it the text page one. And I'm also going to give this a class of page name so that we can style it. And then we also want to have a button here to navigate to page two. So button text is going to say go to two. And we're going to have a tap handler here that's going to say page one button tap. Now, because we're specifying a handler here, we need to have a code behind file for our home page. This will work without the code behind file because in native script, you don't need to specify a code behind file in order to have some UI showing. But I will go ahead and create a code behind 
file here because we need to handle that tab event. So that's homepage.ts. And I'm going to export one function here. That's this function, page one button tap. This is the function that we're going to call when that button is tapped so we can navigate to the next page. We'll come back to that in a second. Let's head over to the action page and fill in some UI here. Here, I'm also going to add a stack layout and I want to have a button always showing on the page and it's going to say something like tap me. It's also going to have a tap handler so we can trigger something called tap me tap. So we're also going to need to have a code behind file for action page. So I'm going to create a new file called action and export a function called tap me tap. All right, this one's going to be pretty simple. All it's going to do is just alert tap. This way we can see that it's working and then it's going to be showing on every page. In fact, we don't even need this event data because we're not going to be doing anything with that. Now, because this action page is going to be at the bottom of the screen, the whole frame is going to be shown at the bottom of the screen. I'm going to go ahead and uh, limit its height to 60 dips and I'm going to say vertical alignment here. I'm going to set that to top so that that label or that button sticks to the top. Also on Android, I want to do a little bit of styling here. So I'm going to say margin top equals 20. I just want to give it a little bit of spacing there. You'll see why in a second. Android and iOS display this a little bit differently. So we do need to account for certain platform specific styling. And this is how you specify margin top just for the Android platform and not for iOS. If you want to know more about UI and styling, check out the native script styling course on nativescripting.com where I go into all the details about this type of styling. Okay, now let's go back to main page. And it looks like I'm not closing out the grid properly here. So I'm going to close that grid layout properly. There we go. And let's take a look. So we're seeing this on iOS and Android here. And as you can see, it does look different. So there's a couple of things we need to do. We're seeing two action bars on Android because every frame gets its own action bar on Android by default. And that's our action page. So on the page element of the action page, I'm going to say action bar hidden. I'm going to set that to true. Let's also give us a background color so that we can see it clearly. And I'm going to make that red. Okay, so there it is. It's on Android and iOS. We have a tap me button. When you tap it, it does alert. And here we also get an alert. All right, so this screen right here is really high up. It's not going down to where we want it to be, which is at the bottom. So let's fix that. We can't do that using grid layout rows. So we need a different method. This is the frame we're trying to move down. So I'm going to tap into the loaded event here. And I'm going to call this frame or let's call it action frame loaded and the loaded event handler can be in main page.ts. This is the code behind. Let me get rid of all this here and export a function called action frame loaded. And here args.object is actually the frame itself. So the frame class inherits from view. So it gets all the events on it, taps, gestures, loaded events, the lifecycle events. We can use that here as well, action frame loaded, and we get that frame back. So there's our frame, we're casting it as a frame and we can do things with that frame. We can animate the frame, but in our case, I want to translate it and I want to translate it in the vertical direction and I want to make it shift down to almost the bottom of the screen. So how do we know where the bottom of the screen is? Because screens are different sizes. Well, we need to get the size of the screen and we can get that from platform. So I'm going to import screen and that's coming from TNS core modules slash platform. And the screen is going to have some information for us. That's going to be useful about the size of the screen. So I'm going to say screen dot main screen, and then it's going to have things like height in dips and height in pixels and width. We want the height in dips. So we want to translate this down and we want to subtract some number. Let's call it 150. So now when that frame loads, it's going to be shifted down to the bottom. As you can see here, let's get some more styling in here in app.css. I'm just going to paste in some styles that I've pre cooked. So I'm going to delete what's here and paste in my styles just for the button. So it looks nicer in that page name. I've styled that as well. So this is what it looks like now. There's our page name, looks much better. And our buttons have that rounded look. All right, so you can see that on iOS, this looks a little bit different than on Android. We still need to fix that up a little bit. So this frame.translate right here, we need to do that differently for iOS and Android. And we need to check to see if something is iOS or Android. So I can do that by saying if is iOS, and that's actually available right here in our platform module. So if is iOS, then we're gonna do some kind of translation else, we're we're going to do a different kind of translation. So let's do this translation with its Android and I'm going to translate it, but not by that much when it's iOS. So I'm going to do only 80 here. 
Let's also go to main page and do action bar hidden here as well. I'm going to set that to true. And let's just make sure that our action page has action bar hidden to true. That's good. All right. So there we go. Now we have the two frames. I can hit tap me on the bottom there on the bottom frame on both iOS and Android. And this go to two button is not implemented yet. So let's go ahead and implement that so you can see the navigation taking place separately. So that's happening from home page right here. We have that button page one button tap is the event handler. We already have it here, but we're not navigating. So usually when you navigate, you use the frame module, but I'm going to show you why that's not going to work here. So import star from frame. Oh, import star as frame. That's coming from TNS core modules UI frame. And here's what you usually do use frame dot topmost and then you navigate to some other page, right? So we need another page here. Let's do that real quick. Let's do page two dash page dot XML. And here I'm just going to paste in the XML, which is just a page and a label inside of it that says page two. Pretty simple. OK, so we're going to navigate to that one. I'm going to say page two page and let's try this out. This is not going to do what we want it to do, by the way. So when you're using frame topmost, it's going to grab the topmost frame and navigate the entire app to that page. So I'm going to press go to two here and you can see that we're on page two. That works very well. However, that frame on the bottom, it got left behind. It's not on top. So how do we navigate only this top part of our app and not the bottom part as well? We want that frame on the bottom that has the tap me button to stay in place. Well, since we're dealing with multiple frames here, we don't use the topmost frame to navigate. I'm going to comment that out. What we want to do is actually use the current frame. So args is going to have an object. In our case, it's a button because that's what we tapped on. And our button, well, let's go ahead and cast that to a button just so that we're explicit about all our imports. So I'm going to import button from TNS core modules UI slash button const button equals args dot object. OK, now our button is going to have a page that it's on, right? All our UI elements are going to have that top page that they're on. But the page is also going to have its parent frame. And in our case, the home page has a frame and the frame lives in main page. That's this one right here. So this is the frame that we want to navigate. Let's go back to home page. So we're going to say button page and then frame and then use this frame to navigate. So we're going to use this frame to navigate to page two page. I'm going to save this and let's check this out. OK, so I'm going to press go to two here and only the top frame navigates. Check that out. If I go back, I go back to page one. But this tap me button and this frame on the bottom stays put. It works here. There's our alert. If I go to page two, it works here as well. And we can navigate that separately on Android. You get the same thing, but you don't get that same iOS transition. We just go to page two and we can use the hardware back button here to go back to page one. But tap me is still there. And if I go to page two, tap me is still there as well. I've got a couple of these iScript native shirts to give away. All you have to do for a chance to win is share this video on Twitter with the hashtag iScript native. Don't forget to use that hashtag so I can find you later. And I'll select a couple of you to send you these shirts. Make sure you subscribe to this channel so that you know when you've won. I'll also be posting a couple of tutorials that build on this one, including the animated bottom sheet. So keep an eye out for those. You can always follow me on Twitter. I'm at Digitalix over there. That's where I do much of my native script related updates. All right, I will see you next time.